starting lineups presented by your local Toyota dealer. They've used five different lineups in their first 14 games. Same lineup today that they had on last Thursday in the win over Georgia Tech. And for the first time all season, Kenny Brooks takes the floor without Liz Kitley. DeAsia Gregg in her 86th game makes her first career start for Virginia Tech tonight. We are underway in this Commonwealth Clash, the 68th all-time meeting in women's hoops between Virginia and Virginia Tech. Wahoos haven't played in a week. They beat Georgia Tech last Thursday night by six. Hokies attacking in transition after the Virginia miss, and they turn it over. Turnovers have been a little bit of an issue over the past week or so. Virginia Tech salvaged the win on Sunday, but last Thursday night they lost in surprising fashion at Clemson. Yeah, no one, at least I didn't expect that loss at Clemson. Clemson just really mucked up the game, made it messy. A style of basketball that Virginia Tech doesn't play. First two of the night for Cameron Taylor. Taylor, a player. The whole team, should I say, for Virginia, still looking to find some rhythm, but Taylor, a player who didn't play a complete season last season, Virginia's glad to have her back out there. Kayana Trailer lost it. Two possessions, two turnovers for Virginia Tech. Without Kitley, it's not just Amor that needs to step up. Everyone needs to do a little bit more, including Kayana Trailer, who struggled offensively their last couple games. And Trailer's a, a, a player that can really get into the basket, get to the rim. Here's Takes McLean, it contact, it's a block. No, it's a charge. They called an offensive foul. Greg taking the hit. She was stationary. So said Angelica Suffren. And that's why DeAsia Greg got the start tonight. She's a player that's just earned the trust of Kenny Brooks and his staff slowly over the past couple seasons. Her first start of her career. Taylor Soul playing on her 23rd birthday. Kicks it out for Greg. How different is it for a player like Greg Tapp coming into the game off the bench versus starting tonight as we see Sol drain the jumper? She's used to coming off and being that sixth man spark, so that's a different type of energy. You're used to seeing the game first, then coming in, so you know what you're stepping into versus tonight. She's starting off with the action. No good for Valade, but McLean creates another possession. Here, McLean picking up the foul on the offensive end about a minute into the game. Coach Mox had a look on the sideline like, this can't happen again. This layup for Valade. Valade just got all the way to the rim. I think she was a little surprised at how open she was when she got there. Namor playing with tons of confidence right now. Amor, one-footed jumper. A confident stroke gets it back, launching. And Georgia misses a pair of that trip. And notice where Georgia Amore shoots. She doesn't shoot right up on the three-point line. She shoots a few feet back, those deep threes. Well, Smith just lost it out of bounds. The first substitutions of the game belong to Virginia. Carol Miller and Yanta Vaughn are in. Well, Coach Mox in her playing days at Hofstra was on Kenny Brooks's scouting report when he was the head coach at James Madison. So Coach Brooks is feeling particularly elderly going <laughs> against Coach Mox now here in the ACC. We asked him earlier how Coach Mox played, and he answered right away. He said exactly like her team. They're tough, they're gritty, they like to get into you, and they really play hard. And of course, Kenny is far from elderly in the seventh season leading Virginia Tech. Tough finish, KT, Trailer's first two of the night. And we just talked about how Trailer likes to get in there, get in those gaps and drive to the basket. Good to see her going early in this one. First lead for Virginia Tech after their three-point win over North Carolina on Sunday. Stepping inside the arc and off the mark on the long jumper. Sam Brunel keeps possession alive, and DeAsia Gregg picks up the foul. Number one on Demo, as Coach Brooks often calls DeAsia Gregg. Four and six against Virginia, but he has won four of his last five. 
Brunel backing into the lane and scores over Seoul. Good patience by Sam Brunel. Might have gotten away with a bit of a carry right there, but the ref don't call it. You keep going. Amor to Seoul on the baseline. Without Kitley, Seoul's going to have more responsibility at the offensive end. And Seoul was fouled in the rebound action. It's going to stay the same way. Let's take a look at tonight's four keys to the game. What you got, Tabitha? Well, for Virginia, Coach Mox told us that they've got to play a full 40 minutes and get off to a quick start. We talked about how they haven't played since the 29th, so they're a bit rusty. Got to get going early in this one. And for Virginia Tech, shoot the three. And both losses that they've had this season, they shot under 30% from the three-point line. They've got to knock those down in this one. Trailer with a burst to the bucket. Second basket for Trailer, just going, putting her head down, getting to the basket. That's where she'll flourish tonight in this game versus Virginia. It's an offensive foul before the shot from Vaughn. Going on London Clarkson. And Trailer for Virginia Tech, look at her, she eyes and sighs up the defense, does a little crossover, and just takes it right at the defender, Carol Miller, puts it in the basket, nice move. A couple early turnovers for Trailer, but after shooting one for her last 13, she's two for two from the field. And notice who's handling the ball, Evan. A lot of, other than Georgia Amor, is going to be Trailer, who helps out with those ball handling duties. Amor looking for her shot. You think it could help Virginia Tech to play Georgia off the ball a little bit? Um, yes and no, depending on how they get in the foul trouble. Oh, goodness, a finish and then a steal. Vaughn scored and then stole the inbounds pass. Good job by Virginia, not giving up on the play and sticking with it. Dante Vaughn giving the Cavaliers a spark. Deep three. Brunel can't connect. It's going to stay here, though. Georgia Amor going to the floor immediately, covering her head. And right here, the take to the basket goes in. But right there, Trailer not paying attention. And the defense, Virginia just gets into it. That was on Amor in the rebounding action. Craig to the bench. Clara Ford into the game. She's guarding Clarkson, and Clarkson has her way with it. Nice move by London Clarkson. I mean, she just put the ball on the floor, was aggressive, did a nice spin, took her time and laid it in. Well, look, this Virginia Tech team's already missing Ashley Owusu. That pinky injury. She's unavailable tonight as well. Soul from the free throw line, short. Miller leads the break. Pulls it back out for Vaughn. Inside again, Clarkson versus Ford. Clarkson spins and scores. Oh, that's going to be the matchup of the night. Very similar styles of play in the post, similar sizes. No 6'6 Kitley, so that makes things a lot more even in the post. Virginia 5 for 10. Good start offensively. Soul with a left hand. On her birthday, Taylor Soul filling it. Two of three so far tonight. Almost hit that last jumper. Was a bit short. But she knows she's got to pick it up with no Kitley on the floor tonight for Virginia Tech. Everyone's got to pick it up. Kitley's done so much, been so good, but she's not available tonight. And it adds a new dynamic to the matchup. London Clarkson in the post is going one-on-one. -on -one. Is getting it going for Virginia in this one. Making the good move. She puts Virginia up by 2-4-1 left in the first. Six minutes into the ball game, and Virginia leads 10 to 8. Again, if you weren't with us at the top of the show, Liz Kitley out tonight. Sprained her left ankle in practice on Tuesday, and it is a big hole that she leaves in the lineup. I mean, you're missing a double-double. 18 points, almost 11 rebounds, which is first in the ACC. She shoots over 50%, and my goodness, blocks a little over two shots a game. Look at that, one, two, three, four, her rankings in the ACC. You're missing a very key player tonight for Virginia Tech. She leads the league with nine double-doubles. She is just breaking all sorts of records in this program. We saw her out at shoot-around today. She was getting some work in, testing it out. Look, if this was the NCAA tournament, I bet she'd be playing. Yeah. yeah. But you said at the top, a precaution. They got a lot of games coming up. It's a long season. 
She's got a bright future on and off the court, obviously. And uh, Coach Brooks basically said, got to protect her from yeah. herself. Absolutely, because she's a competitor. She wants to get out there and play. Her and Georgia Amor are roommates. Uh, we were talking to Kenny Brooks earlier, and he thinks they kind of have a competition where they want to beat each other to the gym. And Kaylee's just one of those players that wants to get out there and help her team. She knows the situation in the ACC. Got to protect her and sit her out in this one. McClay knocks down the three. Before that bucket tab, all 10 points for Virginia had come in the paint. And that's a byproduct in part of Kitley not being in there defensively. Yeah, without 6'6 six, six Kitley, you have the rest of the post players no taller than six foot two for either squad. So everything's a bit more matched up, which is why London Clarkson has gotten a couple scores in there for Virginia. Greg comes up short from the elbow. Again, here's the veteran Miller. Circles the wagons with a pivot. Back outside for Vaughn, the freshman point guard from Maryland. Coach Brooks did say they'd run more zone tonight than they've run throughout the season, in part because of their lack of depth. Good job, good job, good defense by Taylor Soule, who got that left foot to the baseline, cut it off, and forced that Virginia turnover. I was thinking pregame tab. You know, a lot of players, when they transfer or when they switch teams at the professional level, you think they look really strange in that uniform. Taylor Soule, Taylor Soule does not look that strange in a Virginia Tech uniform. It's not all that far away from being the BC Maroon. Here's Soule, the birthday girl, another banker. Her third bucket. And she says, count it. She is feeling it. I told her happy birthday before the game, and she skipped over here and gave me a hug and went back to dancing. She's continuing with that little dance streak out here on the floor. He brings the energy, the versatility, exactly what they need at both ends of the floor on a night like tonight. Open look, Kayla King. Rebound comes right back to her. Amor, trailer three. Yes! She shoots deep, Evan. And for some players, you might think, wow, why they shoot so deep? But for Georgia Amor, because she's so much smaller than other defenders, she shoots deep so she can see it works out for her. She's got the range, no doubt about it. Greg rebounds the Virginia miss. Hokies on a run. Amor. Well, he checked. Clark's in the rebound quickly ahead. Valade. Nearly the second foul on Amor. Did not get called. And a rebound for De'Asia Gregg. Three rebounds, four rebounds for De'Asia Gregg already. She's taken a charge. One still. I mean, just proving why she deserved to start tonight in King's place. King gets her own rebound again. Soul on the drive. Lays it in. Taylor Soul with a smile on her face, communicating with her teammates, saying thanks for the assist. Timeout, Virginia. 7-0 run from Tech. Virginia Tech was down early in this one, but they really got it going behind Taylor. So on her birthday, says and one on the score counted. And right here, Georgia Amor shooting at the Virginia Tech logo, nothing but net. And again, Taylor Soul just filling on her birthday with a nice elongated step. Telling her teammates, thanks for seeing me. Thanks for the assist. Eight points for Seoul. She only scored five on Sunday in the North Carolina game. That was a wild one. There were 26 lead changes and 12 ties here at Castle on Sunday afternoon. Two teams avoided, looking to avoid the losing streak. Now it's North Carolina that's lost three straight after they lost at home to Duke last week and here in Blacksburg. Yeah, Kenny Brooks was just trying to make sure it wasn't this squad because they had lost to Clemson a couple right. games ago, right before that UNC game. There were so many upsets, I got my upsets mixed up. Duke lost uh, to Florida State. North Carolina lost to Florida State. Duke beat NC State, lots of upsets, and Virginia <laughs> Tech has now scored nine in a row. Deasia Gregg in her first career start just led the team a rebound in last season. She's got four here tonight. Seen her role steadily grow as Virginia's Taylor Valaday knocks down a three right in front of the Virginia Tech bench. Important shot, just the fifth three of the year for Taylor Valaday, not known for her outside shooting. 
She's known for her assists, averages just over four a game. Sits fifth in the ACC in assists per game. Foul's on Virginia. That's on McLean, it's number two. Amaka Agugwa Hamilton, much better known as Coach Mox. Gonna bring her star to the bench. Two fouls, 34.7 seconds left in the first. And taking McLean out kind of equals the, or evens things out on the rebounding front. I mean, McLean leads the ACC in offensive rebounds per game. Liz Kitley leads the ACC in rebounds, period. Incredibly quick first step from Seoul, just could not finish. Beat Taylor on the dribble. Shot clock is off. Virginia looking to retake the lead. Not looking for the final shot, though. Amor saves it, but it's stolen. Another chance for UVA. Valade to the bucket. No! Rebound, Guyman. And that'll end the first. The initial shot a little quick by Lawson, but I liked the second ball rotation. They didn't get it to go in, but I like the ball movement for Virginia. One down, three to go. We had four ties, three lead changes in that first quarter. Done with one, Hokies by one. Third birthday. I mean, she knew that she was gonna have to pick up where Kit Lee left off, and on her birthday, she just got it going. Knocked down a jumper early, just been taking it to the basket, eyes up the defense, elevates over and says, count it. Just got the scoring going for the Hokies early in this one. Hopefully, they can keep her heated up. Showing the moves that helped to make her all ACC three times in her Boston College career. Now a graduate student here at Virginia Tech. I see those highlights too, Taylor. Taylor Soul. Don't think I didn't notice, girl. They look nice. Both teams shooting right around 44%. Technically, Virginia 43.8 and Virginia Tech 44.4. We like to be very detailed and <laughs> meticulous here on the show. All right, second quarter. I think so far, Virginia Tech has weathered the storm playing without Kitley. Fouls on Valaday running through the screener. How will Kitley's absence continue to evolve, do you think, as the game progresses? Well, I think, you know, for sure, Virginia's going to try and take it on the inside because they don't have that 6'6 six, six size to go up against. So they're going to try to do some things offensively, giving it to the post, which we saw early with London Clarkson. But Virginia, Virginia Tech, should I say, offensively, they got to keep just driving to the basket like Amor just did right now and knocks down the two with the one dribble floater. But between Amor, Greg, Soul, they've all just been taking it to the rack, and the same with Trailer. A nice move by Amor. She's got five. Virginia turns it over for the seventh time. Kitley, 101 games in her career. She's been very durable. One of the four Hokies averaging double figures. Kayla King is just a fingernail underneath that double finger bar. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Kayla King's uh, shooting, though, this season. has been a bit streaky. Yeah. We're used to seeing her knock down those deep three sits fifth in Virginia Tech program history and three-point field goals made. Eight more at six. Neither of them are going to catch Asia Shepard, but they're both going to keep rising up there. Amor misses. Guyman kept it alive for a moment, but then a foul after the rebound was secured by Lawson. And credit Dale, who did a good job boxing out. She's the one, McKenna Dale, who kept that rebound alive, just bounced it over to her teammate, Lawson, who was able to corral it and draw that foul. Taking it for your number 23, Trailer. Trailer back in. Dale passed up the shot and then turns it over on the drive, although Virginia fortunate to get it back. Dale doesn't hesitate the next opportunity. It's a physical battle on the glass right now. I would have thought that was Mira McLean getting that rebound, but that was Caden Lawson, one of the two original Virginia Tech or Virginia Cavalier players on the squad. 
Greg to the shot to the head, going for that rebound too. Entry feed incomplete, looking for Taylor. Picked off by Amor. Good job by Taylor, so fronting right there, Cameron Taylor. That's how they got that steal. Soul looking to attack. Unable to finish, gets it back. Two great chances and pretty good defense by Taylor. Valade pulls up, puts it in. Nice job by Valade. Not paying attention to the noise in the crowd. He thought that Soul deserved a foul, just taking it down in transition. Despite the adversity, knocking it down. Amor to the basket. Amor, Soul, Greg, Taylor. All four of those players just been putting their head down and taking it inside. Getting it into the rim. Looked like Brunel traveled because she did. So happy feet there. I think she recognized that she might have had that first step on the defensive player. Got a little excited and move those feet before she dribbled the ball. True freshman Katie Polly into the game for Virginia. Soul going to work again. Sets up Greg, fakes it, takes it. Brunel with a rebound. Lawson leaves it for the sharpshooter, Polly. And Greg got to her feet just in time to get the rebound. Tiaza Greg still in the squat as she caught that rebound. Five boards already for Demo. And a hand check foul called on Kaden Lawson. Kaden Lawson. That's her first personal foul. Second, second foul on Virginia here in the second quarter. So Hokies basketball from the side. You know, the last two games, Virginia Tech saw way more zone defense at their offensive end of the floor than they had seen in their first dozen games of the season. Coach Mox believes in playing man, and that's primarily what Virginia's gonna do tonight. Well, I mean, Kenny Brooks said they worked on the zone, so even if he did see it against Coach Mox and Virginia today, he said they worked on it, they saw it. Against Clemson, they had never seen it before, so they didn't know how to respond, but now they've been practicing a bit at it. Amor's now one for five from deep. Taylor, tough shot. Six points down for Cam Taylor. Has two 20-point games this season, closing in on 500 rebounds. Just a player that does a bit of everything for Virginia. Scoring, block shots, rebounds. Brunel doesn't like it, but the foul is on the Notre Dame transfer, Sam Brunel. Virginia Tech ranked in the top 10 for the sixth consecutive week. They score a lot of points, and they don't allow that, allow that many points, and that's a good combination. They're currently 11th in the nation in scoring margin. For Virginia's right here, and they're 13th in the nation in scoring margin right now and here on, the, on January 5th. And on the defensive side, Virginia Tech is second in the ACC defending the three, whereas Virginia's number one in yep. the ACC defending the three. So both these teams kind of counter each other in a good way. We'll see how Virginia can defend this three-point shooting team for Virginia Tech. Both teams top 20 in the nation, three-point percentage defense. Now the difference is overall Virginia Tech's a better three-point shooting team than Virginia. So far though tonight, Wahoos are two for seven from three. Virginia Tech is one of eight. Rebound for Taylor Soule. Again, a good shot by Virginia. Alexia Smith drew in the defenders, pass it, and just couldn't knock down the shot. Trailer, step back three. Acrobatic maneuver by Miller to secure the rebound, not travel, and then dish the outlet pass. Pauly missed the three, but Brunel has the offensive board. It's the cutting Taylor. Count it. And one. Excellent, excellent job by Virginia turning defense. And to offense right here, Trailer misses the shot. Virginia grabs the rebound. Carol Miller keeps her eyes up and still finds the open man over three defenders. And in transition, they just find Taylor, who gets the and 
and one right in front of the Hokies bench. I got a serious question for you, Tab. As someone who has long hair yourself, if her hair touches out of bounds, but no other part of her body does, is she out of bounds? It depends on if it's extensions or not. If it's your hair, or if it's <laughs> now Carol Miller has a lot of hair, but I think she has extensions in, so that is not a part of her. It doesn't count. Now, she did an unbelievable job staying in bounds. The hair, though, almost <laughs> went out. Kept her dribble alive, vision alive, everything. Impressive. Yes, indeed. Kayla King puts the Hokies back in front. Exactly what Kayla King needs. She went scoreless two games this season, one of those games being against Notre Dame. No, she, she can knock down that shot, has got to get going for Virginia Tech. And Sam Brunel knocks down the free throw line jumper herself. Brunel is such a talented scorer. We've seen it throughout her career in this league. Graduated from Notre Dame in just three years, now pursuing a master's in education in Charlottesville, about 30 minutes from where she grew up in Ruckersville, Virginia. Diamond can't connect, and the rebound, last touch out of bounds off Virginia Tech. Hokies will be playing defense when we come back. Virginia Tech's one of the best three-point shooting teams, and Kayla King is one of those reasons ties the score 24-all. All too often due to foul trouble these past few games. Yeah, Coach Mox had to sit her down because they need her in this game, her scoring and her rebounding. She leads the ACC in offensive rebounds per game. Plus 12 rebounding margin. It's because mostly Amir McLean's rebounding averages almost 10 rebounds a game, 9.8 per game, and she's a guard. And she didn't play a, a whole lot of minutes in the first half against Georgia Tech. It was a wild third quarter. She came back into the game and just completely took over. Cavaliers at one point made nine consecutive buckets. McLean was a huge part of that. A 25 to eight run that transformed a substantial seven point deficit into a 10 point lead late in that third quarter in the win over Georgia Tech. Yeah, only played 18 minutes and came back to lead the team, not only in points, but also in rebounds. Had nine rebounds versus Georgia Tech in the last game, 13 points. You don't see that very often. Mm -mm, sure don't. 19 minutes to lead the team in points and boards. And one chance here for Cameron Taylor. Really like her game. And Evan, you asked me earlier about the difference with no Liz Kitley, and I said, hey, the posts are going to be a bit more even. And right here, they just find Taylor on the inside, splits two defenders, does a good job positioning her body, and gets the and one. Taylor, the Marquette transfer. Closing in on 1,000 points in her career. She's now 70 points away. She's got nine tonight. Pretty good defense by Polly. Trailer tried to beat her off the dribble, but could not convert. Yeah, Polly just did not give her a step at all. Just excellent defense for a shorter defender using her body. Taylor again. Chance for another three-point play. Hokie fans don't like the call. Evan, but we told the audience earlier in the show that they were going to go and it was going to be a post battle and they're just allowing Taylor to go ahead and play one-on-one -on -one defense. Virginia Tech's going to have to find help because that's a second back-to-back -back and one for Taylor. And the foul on Taylor Soul. There's a lot of Taylors out here. There's a trailer, there's two Taylors. I'm confused. <laughs> You're not the only one. Those are three different people, folks. We're talking about three different people. It's an eight-nothing run for Virginia over the last minute plus. This is Trailer again going to work on Polly. And the foul this time going against Virginia. And on the opposite in Evan, you asked, what do you think Virginia Tech was going to do? We said, listen, Trailer has to take it into the basket. You've got Amor who's got to get it into the basket. Soul. And that's exactly what Kayana Trailer has been doing. Every possession, she's just been keeping her head up. If she can't find her teammates, she goes one-on-one -on -one and takes it to the rim. Now she's successful drawing the foul. Hey, who's got 
Foul called on Pauly. Free throws for Trailer. The Purdue transfer. Only five points in her last two games. Since she scored 22 in the game at high point right before Christmas. And you know Kenny Brecks, Brooks, excuse me, and the Virginia Tech staff, but no Kitley went to Trailer and said, hey, you've got to be on tonight. We need you. She's responding to the call. Brunel can't finish. Long rebound finds Cam Taylor. Fresh possession for Virginia. Looking for some more second chance points. Oh, great defense. King got a piece of the shot. Here comes Taylor Soul the other way. Got it with her. Guyman should have shot. Guyman telling Taylor Soul, hey, my bad, I got to take that shot. He's trying to look back for Taylor Soul cutting in transition. And right here, Soul gives it up. Guyman sees her open, but Soul not looking for that pass. Thought Guyman was going to shoot it. Only the fourth turnover, though, for Virginia Tech. Their first here in the second quarter. Taylor Taylor matchup. This time it's going against Virginia. Offensive foul on Cameron Taylor. Taylor a bit too aggressive on the drive. Just leads with that shoulder. And right here is going to take Taylor Soul one on one. And Soul does a good job absorbing the contact after Cameron Taylor spins into her aggressively. Might have sold it just a little bit, but that's what a veteran player does absorbs that contact, sells it just enough for the refs to call the foul. The work of a 50 year grad student. So Cameron Taylor to the bench now with two fouls as well. Amor all the way. Really like her attacking off the dribble. More penetration for the guards from Virginia Tech. We know they can shoot the three, but tonight they flourished inside of the paint. Smith gets the roll. Smith says, well, you guys are going to take it to the basket. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. Goes right on the inside, drives with the right pull-up jumper. Foul's going against Virginia. I think they got Smith. They do indeed. The guards for Virginia Tech know they've got to penetrate and get into the paint, whether it's drawing a foul or just scoring and drawing the foul. Georgia Amor does a good job of leading the defender and leading that ball so that she couldn't block it. Two for Virginia Tech. Hokies in the bonus. Trailer back to the line. Seven first half points for Trailer. Eight for Seoul. Nine for Amor. Cameron Taylor, the game's high score for Virginia with a dozen. Back to a two-point game, 90 seconds to go in the half. Looking over the top for Brunel. She couldn't handle the catch. Ball was a bit too leading, almost out of bounds. Brunel had to fumble that one and went out of bounds, but at least it's not a live ball turnover, and it goes out. They get a chance to have Virginia Tech bring it up the floor, not in transition. That was the second turnover for Lawson. Before that, Virginia had 10 turnovers as a team. One turnover apiece from 10 different players. I don't think I've ever seen that before. You go down the score sheet, it's one, 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 one. And only two players didn't have a turnover on the Virginia squad so far in this game. Positive side for Virginia. No one's being too careless turning it over multiple times through most of the first half. I will say this, I'm surprised to still see Mira McLean on the bench. I mean, yes, she's got two fouls, but I thought I would at least see her in the second quarter midway, but I guess Coach Mock says, hey, I'm gonna let the Cavaliers out here. They're playing good, let them keep playing. They're a deep team. They have 11 players that can do work. And they're handling their business pretty well without her. This foul, I believe, is going on Clarkson. That's going to be her second. McLean picked up her second with 34.7 seconds left in the first. We haven't seen her in the second. 
And yet Virginia still has a two-point lead, although that could train, change with the upcoming free throws. Coming up to the half, we'll go around the ACC seven games in the league tonight. First half highlights and analysis. Check in on that uh, Miami-North Carolina game. That was tight. Tar Heels trying to get off the schneid. Lost I, three in a row. Yeah, I know Courtney Bankhart does not want to make that a fourth. The last game I saw her, she said she didn't recognize her team and didn't know whether or not they believed that they could win the games. And Notre Dame coming to Chapel Hill. They better start believing. This Sunday. We're tied for the sixth time in the half. In a two-possession game from tip-off to the present. Offensive foul. Number three on Clarkson. Taylor Soul. She might be a fifth-year senior, but not all fifth-year seniors are this smart. She adjusted to how Virginia was coming at her on the offensive end, and she has just been absorbing the contact, positioning her body, and taking that charge, sacrificing herself on her birthday, taking the contact and selling it a little bit to the ref. Good job, Taylor Soul. She beats her chest, gets the crowd going, but also gets the possession back for the Hokies. I'll say, it's easy to sell it when you get an elbow to the chin like that. <laughs> You're right. She actually did get fouled. You're right. Does it hurt less when they blow the whistle your way? No, it's the adrenaline. It's going to hurt so much more when the adrenaline stops pumping. Game clock and shot clock just about in sync, about a second apart. Trailer done a good job running the offense for a good portion of the night. Trailer off the dribble, missed it. Miller the other way, shoots a three-quarters court shot with four seconds left. So now Virginia Tech has two seconds remaining. And Coach Mox looking at Carol Miller and saying, hey, that's not the shot we wanted. We have still have two seconds left. Trailer, good if it goes. And it's short. And we will go to halftime. Deadlocked. 32 apiece. Hokies won the first quarter by one. Wahoos win the second quarter by one. Entertaining 20 minutes of hoops, as you'd expect, in the Commonwealth Clash. Dave Odom and Wake Forest, Winston Salem. Cool story about the Kitleys and the Kings. Uh, we'll tell you later on in the game. I covered it in the ACC tournament last year, but. Kayla King and Liz Kitley's relationship as besties started years ago with King getting Kitley to come to Virginia Tech. Halliday comes up short on the opening try of the second half. Soul driving on Brunel. Beat her to the bucket but missed the shot. Taylor Soul a bit too short on that one. Wants that one back, but she's a player that'll get her back on defense. Just four points in the first half for Brunel. She averages 11 and is capable of scoring 25 or 30. Brunel also had five rebounds, so if she's not getting it on the scoring end, well, she's going to do it defensively. Brunel short with a one-handed push shot. Soul's the first player down the floor looking for that transition game. Amor had her head up, but good job by Virginia going with Taylor Soul. Two defenders were down there to meet her. Soul has made five threes this year, but she knows that's not the strength of her game. Greg has been hot lately. Soul, that's the strength of her game. Hustle plays, creating possessions. Taylor King for three. Taylor King notches her second three of this game. It's been a bit streaky in this season, but she's a player that they had to get going, especially with the ACC being so tight as it is. McLean, that's her spot. McLean just did a good job of being patient. She felt the body of Kayla King. It did move defensively, so she just went to her left, spun around, and shot it over the defense, elevated over the defense. One of the best verticalities for a guard we've seen in the ACC. No whistle, two for Soul. Soul doing a good job of staying with the play. Virginia tried to take that charge defensively, but Soul, good body control. Put that one in the basket. We got Kayla King for holding on to McLean as she tried to battle for position. And right here, the three doesn't go in. Virginia Tech with the good ball movement doesn't give up, and they find the right player 
for the right shot. And on the opposite end, Mary McLean, who was missing most of that first half, just sizes up the defense. See, she can't go to her right, goes back to her left. Big block by Greg on McLean at the rim. We're not quite saying Kitley who, but that was a great stuff. Deep three, no good for King, who, by the way, picked up her third foul. That last trip, she remains in the game. McLean steps around Amor. Man, McLean just grabbed the rebound, elevated over all the other players, and took it coast to coast. You see what you were missing in the first half for the Cavaliers. She just has a knack for putting the ball in the best bucket. Doesn't matter if she's got her balance, leaning one way, fading away. Greg's wide open. Rebound tipped by McLean, controlled by Trailer. Soul poked away. Virginia basketball. And Virginia Tech's just isolating and allowing Soul to go inside. But right here, Mir McLean grabs the rebound, goes coast to coast, takes it at the defense, goes right by George Abel, who tries to get the charge. Good body control, knowing how to control her body, avoid drawing that charge and make the basket. We don't call that a Euro step, it's an Aussie step, because she stepped around the Aussie to score. You're such a dad. Thank you. <laughs> dad joke. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Stop embarrassing the kids. Could, could have been worse. <laughs> They're not old enough to, yet to feel embarrassed by me. They don't remember. It's coming soon. All right, Amor to trailer. Oh! Vaughn got a piece of the ball and the arm, and she's called for the foul. And Vaughn talking to her teammates, saying, hey, you got to get back, because right here, she's the one who takes the foul. Good foul to take, but she stops a two-on-one break by Virginia Tech with the DeAsia Gregg coming in transition to rebound. Trailer now five for five from the free throw line tonight. Trailer's just been active the entire game. I mean, she's just been taking it into the basket. She's only two of six from the field. But she's affected the game at so many levels. The pace and tempo and purpose of Virginia Tech's offense has really been dictated by KT. Yeah, she's been one of the ball handlers, her and Georgia Amor, because without a Lusu in the game. Vaughn around it out. Another rebound for Craig. Eight rebounds for Demo. Amor not settling for three. Fakes it, takes it, perfect. That's it. She loves the moment, she enjoys the intensity, and that's gonna call for a Virginia timeout. I love that possession for Virginia Tech because she didn't force the shot initially. Amor just does a nice little fake, takes her time, knocks it down, nothing but net. They're two for four from deep. Kayla King and Georgia Amor each knocking one down for Kenny Brooks and the Hokies. Yeah, in the first half, both those players were drawn to the basket and going inside. But right now, they talk to Kayla King and say, hey, we need you to come alive from beyond the arc. She got one, and Georgia Amor gets another. Takes her time, sidesteps Mira McLean's defense and just gets the Hokies back in front by six. We got to chat with Georgia Amor at shoot around today. Asked her, if Liz Kitley cannot play, how does that change things for you? And she said, it doesn't really change things. I just need to be at my best with everything I do. That's like every night for Georgia Amor. I mean, she played 40 minutes the other game. Bad pass, Hokies ball. Her last game, should I say, and she averages almost 35 minutes a game, so she's got to be at her best every single game, especially as the point guard for the Hokies. Georgia also said that this is really the first time in her career that the Commonwealth Clash has juice. You know, her freshman year, Virginia opted out of the season during the COVID year after just a few ball games, so they didn't play. Last year, the Cavaliers were struggling. The games were not that competitive. This year, Virginia shows up 13 and one, two and one in the league. Soul, the clock winding down, gets to the rim, and has another chance for a three-point play. And Taylor's soul is just so strong up top. She just
just absorbs the contact, eyes the defense, gets her on the first step, and my goodness, she just keeps her eyes up, her dribble alive, absorbs the contact, and one. Taylor Soul, happy birthday. Second foul on Caden Lawson. <laughs> Offensive rebound for Greg. Demo does Debo the rebound. Man, DeAsia Greg has been a monster on the boards. Her ninth rebound of the night. Trailer passes a little bit behind her, and the foul is on Tech. It's on Trailer. Her first. And Virginia Tech can't allow this to deflate them. That's Trailer's first. She's not in foul trouble. Keep on being aggressive defensively and offensively. They're stretching out the lead bit by bit. This was a tied game at 32 all at halftime. They've got an eight point lead because they've just been aggressive. And they've also increased their rebounds since halftime. Virginia Tech had 15 rebounds at the half, 23 right now, and we're just halfway through the third quarter. Inside to Taylor. They'd love to get her going here in the third after a 12 point first half. Mira McLean right now is on the bench. Hasn't picked up her third foul yet, but just getting a breather. That's a charge on Amor. That's her second. London Clarkson. Excellent job absorbing the contact and taking the charge. And Evan, you know, you may not have this problem, but us women, we got that problem with taking charges. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts for us, too. You haven't seen me take a charge in a while, have you? Into the night. They've made some shots. And they've dominated the glass. They were being outboarded by seven, 22 15 in the first half. That topic is now tied due to a 9 2 start on the glass in the third for the Hokies. Yeah, credit DeAsia Gregg and Taylor Souls rebounding and tenacity. They've been just going after it, and they've allowed or at least gotten the Hokies more second chance opportunities. They had seven second chance points. They have 10 now. So credit the rebounding by DeAsia Gregg and Taylor Soul. Just their tenacity at the basket. They're grabbing the rebounds, giving Virginia Tech second chance opportunities, but most importantly, not allowing the Cavaliers to have those second chances at the basket. Virginia Tech heads to Miami. This Sunday, I'll be facing a Hurricanes team that just beat the top 25 North Carolina. Hurricanes sneaking away with that win for Katie Meyer, who always enjoys a win over the Tar Heels, being a Duke alum. Katie Meyer is definitely going to have her team compete. She has a way of sneaking up on you, but you know what you're going to get when you go against Miami. you got to come and bring your A game. Tonight, UNC saw that. Miller passed up to three, missed the two. Greg has her 10th rebound of the night. Amor. So composed with the dribble. Soul kicks it. Greg with five. Travel. Yeah, DeAsia Gregg took that one dribble, should have eyed the defense. You got to keep your dribble alive. Virginia doing a good job of swarming her and most importantly, defending the other players around her so that they didn't get open. She had no vision, nobody to pass to. Virginia hasn't scored in over three minutes. Surprised, McLean's on the bench. Taylor missed it. Where are we going? Virginia Tech ball. And if they called it on Taylor, I think they did. Yep, that's her second. No, her third, excuse me. And I was just about to say, Mir McLean wanted to see her back in the game. And right on cue, she gets put back in by Coach Mox. But Mir McLean, I mean, she's, again, the team's leading offensive rebounder and scorer. So they need her in the game if they want to cut to this eight point lead. She's only played 10 of the first 26 minutes tonight. They're going to go to the monitor here to check out this sequence on the rebound action. Make sure they got the foul on the right person. Angelica Suffren, 
Edward Sedlaski and Kevin Sparrick, three officials tonight. And we're told they're going to change the foul from Taylor to Clarkson. And I'm not sure if that's great news for Virginia because that's four on Clarkson. What? But only two now on Taylor. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, Taylor's been contributing more in this game than Clarkson has. I mean, Clarkson can contribute at that level, but tonight's just not been her night so far. So that's kind of a sigh of relief for the Hokies. Soul catch into the corner. Amor with 10. Greg, a lot of contact, no whistle. Here come the Hoos. But Deja Greg's so strong, I want to see her be a little bit stronger. Oh, speaking of strength, Carol Miller and all Carol the Miller way. says, I'll show you how it's done. Yes, indeed. Miller is not down that one, but she missed a couple chippies right at the rim in this game. But Miller does a good job, keeps her eyes up in transition, notices no one's picking her up in defense. She just splits one, two, three defenders right at the rim. Knocks that one down and one. Do not play Red Rover with Carol Miller. Okay, now, Evan, I, I laughed at that, but I'm going to admit Red Rover. I don't even know what it is. You I'm sorry. Be me. I'm sorry. You're embarrassing your kids, dude. I know. <laughs> it's what we do. Speaking on behalf of dads everywhere. A more to Greg. To the corner for Guyman. Nice dish, but mishandled. Soul, great hustle to keep it alive. And the foul's on Miller. Nice job, one by Taylor Soul, getting that rebound and keeping the possession alive. Another second chance opportunity, but also by Trailer, who just did a nice job handling the ball, keeping it alive as she was fouled in contact in the middle of the lane. First on Miller. Red quick shot for two. And those are the high percentage shots that De'Asia Greg Flores is at. Yes, she has three-point range. It hasn't been knocked and going in for her this game. I want to see her get closer to the basket, take some more high percentage shots. Greg now two for eight, four points, ten rebounds. Miller missed the three. Sol climbing up the rebound chart as well, her eighth. Sol sets up Greg, who passes up the look. Into the hands of Amor. She's got 12 points tonight. Sol puts her head down. Offensive foul is the call. Yeah, a lot of contact on that one. You can clearly see what Taylor Sol was going to attempt to do, especially the shot clock was running down. They couldn't get anything going, so she just takes it and attempts to pass it out. I'll tell you, I think that's a block. I think so, too. Um, Carol Miller was still moving, but, you know, in real time, as Pauly knocks down the three for the Cavs, cuts into this lead to seven. Big swing there. Could have been two free throws for Seoul. Instead, it's a four-point game after Katie Pauly makes her 10th three of the year. Sol tries to answer. Battle for the board taken by Miller. And here she comes again. Polly. Rebounded by Smith. The momentum swing, just that charge taken at the other end by Virginia has swung all the momentum into the Cavs' favor. McLean going to work, and she triggers. Agree with that one. I mean, the ref is closer to the call, but that looked like a nice little hop step. I guess they're paying attention to that. Coach Mox doesn't agree with it either. I don't think that's a travel. However, the ref, that's his job. He has a better view, so we got to trust the call. 14th turnover for Virginia. And Virginia Tech has turned it over four times in the last four minutes. Greg will step back. Rebound by Miller again. Here she comes. Like a freight train. Dishes this time. Blocked from behind, but a foul. 
Free throws for Alexia Smith as Greg picks up the personal. Alexia Smith, as she fell, looked back like, what just hit me? Took the contact right here. Carol Miller finds Smith in transition, and De'Aja Greg just comes out of nowhere. Yep, and comes across the body, gets her on the right arm, and forces Smith to shoot the shot into the bottom padding of the backboard. Three fouls on Greg. In and out for Smith. Coach Mox giving her players the look like, all right, we got to knock down these free throws in there, and out. There's bacon on the line here. No free bacon, says Alexia Smith. I forgot they do that here. If they miss both free throws, they get free bacon. Alexia Smith, not that generous to the fans <laughs> here in Blacksburg. No high blood pressure for you guys out there. She saved Jack. Still a fourth quarter to come. Soul. Nice move, but couldn't finish. Here's McClain the other way. And then she lost it. Poked away from behind. Ahead, Soul. Two more. Good job by the Hokies defensively. She was trailing on defense. Just took her hand and poked it away till her teammate got the turnover and capitalized on it. Brunel to McClain. Good position. That's what she does. And McClain's just so smooth. I mean, she doesn't change her look on her face in the post. She just takes her time, eyes up the defense, and just goes to work. Considering she's played only 13 of the first 30 minutes for Virginia to be within three and for her to only have two fouls, Virginia's not in a bad spot. Final seconds of the third. Amor! How many times have you seen Georgia Amor drill that shot with no time left on the shot clock? It's what she does. The junior from Australia with a dagger of a three to double the lead. Feeling the moment right here, but the defense gets it started for the Hokies. They get the turnover, leak it out in transition to Taylor Soul and A. Moore. Can you say Amore for three? Knocks it down, Nutsa Burnett. More balance and depth from Virginia. They've played 11 players. Nine different Cavaliers have scored. Hokies have only had seven players take the floor. Only five have scored. Does Virginia Tech have enough in the tank from its stars without Kitley here in the final 10 minutes? So we know Georgia Amor does because she's used to playing a lot of minutes in tight games. The pieces around her, what are they going to be able to do? She said sometimes she feels tired, but she doesn't let it show. Nice pass from Soul, and Greg lays it in. And I'm happy to see Virginia Tech going back on the interior. I feel like both teams kind of got away from going into the basket, made a few shots on the outside, and some charges that were drawn kind of detracted them away from it, but going back to their strengths. Beautiful high-low Brunel to McLean. But what a big double score for Virginia Tech. You think about the three from Amor at the buzzer, and then the Greg layup, that's five straight points on consecutive possessions around the end and start of the quarters. Trailer for three. McLean touched it last. Hokies ball. Both these teams went through a momentum shift at the end of the third there, where there was the one where Paulie hit the three for Virginia off of a steal, and they hit about five points straight back to back. And then Virginia Tech just did the same thing, so both teams taking advantage of some momentum swings. Had six ties, seven lead changes. Virginia Tech sees the lead early in the third and has not trailed in the second half. And a uh, little towel duty under the bucket, cleaning up a wet spot. Amor gets it in for trailer. Liz Kitley. Sprained ankle in practice on Tuesday. Game time decision. Did not play. King from the corner. Rebound to Miller. Good extra pass, though, by De'Asia Gregg. She was about to pop that shot and said, no, Kayla King has a higher percentage. Didn't knock it down, but she found the right person to take the shot. I like how Miller doesn't necessarily need a point guard. She just gets the rebound and goes. Here's McLean battling through the contact. Double team comes. Miller through the contact again. No whistle. Fouls on both teams there. 
And it's going to be Virginia ball. Yeah. Soul, I think, fouled McLean blocking her out, and then Soul got hit in the face. By McLean, who's yeah. falling from the box. Right. <laughs> A lot of contact, but I like the no call because, like you said, both players kind of fouled each other. Let them play. Six point game. Brunel, good look. Don't want to leave Sam Brunel open. She is a stretch post player. We saw that she can hit that shot in Notre Dame, carries it over to the Cavaliers. her night and I saw it on her face she was dancing and warm-ups had a smile it's her birthday and she knows that she's got to take up the slack for no Kitley does it right here draws into the defense draws the contact has everybody else clear out of her squad and just takes it right at Sam Brunel and one second foul on Brunel Soul having a night Season high was 24 points at high point. He's got 18 and 8. He's barely been off the floor at all. Beautiful pass. McLean finds Valaday. Virginia won't go away. Just such a scrappy team, and that's how Coach Mox was as a player. Coach Brooks telling us that after he coached against Coach Mox, his team or her team is exactly like her. They're scrappy, they're tough, they play hard, and we see that on display with the Cavaliers. Number two on Miller. Trailer struggled to get it in. Greg able to handle it. Soul wide open, almost dribbled out of bounds. And it'll be Virginia Tech ball. Taylor Soul said, look, I know what I'm good at. She looked at that three-point shot and said, eh, let me find the right person, because she knows that her strength is going into the lane and getting to the rack. Hokies are five for 20 from three tonight. Amor has got three of those five. Amor kicks it to King, who's got the other two. Trailer wants one. Puts it in! Man. Virginia Tech did not panic on that one. It was almost a turnover once or twice. They just stuck with the play and found the right person with one second left on the shot clock. We're seeing clutch basketball both ways. Virginia's turn. Valaday, short, soul with her ninth rebound. Trailer, one on one. All the way! So quick. Look how quick trailer just got that ball and she said hey it's one-on-one -on -one. she just beat the defense led with that left hand and got the scoop to go Tabitha almost said one on three but she made it into a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> by beating everybody exactly. down there so quick and Sam Brunel yet again knocks down back-to-back -back jumpers first the three now the little 17-foot jump shot Virginia just won't go away The crescendo from the crowd after that Brunel bucket. Amor. Free throws coming. Third foul on McLean. And right here, you got Trailer. Look at the shot clock as it expires. It goes in right as the red light goes up. And on the next play, Trailer just beats the defense. She had three defenders on her, made it a one-on-one, -on -one, like you said, Evan. Led with the left hand, so Brunel couldn't block it. Excellent, excellent job in transition. Double figures for the eighth time this year for Trailer. She's got 15. Meanwhile, Amor, that gives her 16. Taylor Soul leading the way with 18. They have been the big three tonight. Greg and King each have six apiece, and no one from the Hokie bench has scored. And Georgia Amor is only five foot five, you guys. So she makes those shots look easy, but the body control in the air. Mir McLean was trying to take the charge. Amor just consorted her body in the air to avoid the, the foul. That's a great point about Amor's size, because she plays bigger than that. And she creates space for herself with her quickness and changing of speeds. Here's the steal. 
Amor is gonna blow by Brunel all the way, but missed the runner. Virginia the other way. A little bit too much on that. She's a little strong up top, usually knocks that one down, but an excellent job leaking out in transition. Just beat all the defenders down with her foot speed. Right on cue. Smith, two. Smith has been having a good scoring time the last few games. She led all scores versus Duke. Double-digit back-to-back scoring games. Duke and Georgia Tech just finishing, picking up where she left off. She's got five tonight. Here's Soul to Greg. She'll take it and make it. High percentage shots. Deja Greg is money inside of the paint. And from that little free throw jumper. Kenny Brooks said on Sunday as Polly airballs the three. Deasia Gregg, before today, had never started a game for the Hokies, but she had finished many of them. She started tonight, she's trying to finish it too. Her defense, she turned it into offense, allowed Trailer to leak out and transition. They've just been doing it by committee and they've been leading the way defensively. This would be a heck of a win if they could get it without Kitley. And again, they don't think, they certainly hope, that Kitley's injury won't be a long-term thing. She was listed as a game-time decision. Again, we saw her at shoot-arounds today and thought she looked pretty good. Virginia Tech at Miami on Sunday and then back here to play Louisville next week. There aren't too many easy nights in the ACC. No, that's what I was just going to say. I was going to say, well, maybe this is the easiest of the three, and that's no offense to Virginia, but honestly, it's really not because... And they're 13-1. and one. And they're 13-1, and one, and that that's nuts. Like, I, some people were trying to mention strength of schedule with Virginia. I was like, listen, guys, this is Division I women's basketball in the ACC. I don't care who you play. You still got to put the ball in the basket over an opponent, and 13 and one is so impressive. Well, Greg turns it over. I was just getting ready to praise Virginia Tech's job of taking care of the basketball tonight. Even with that one, it's the tenth giveaway of the game. Virginia Tech in their last two games turned it over 37 times. Wow. So they've cut that down significantly, and that's one of the big reasons the turnover disparity. They're up eight. They're still up eight after the Taylor miss, but the foul is on Tech. And for the folks at home who don't really know how to gauge, uh, you know, turnovers, you want to keep that. Most coaches want to keep that at 15 and under. Some coaches like to go with no more than 10 or 12, but a lot of the times 15 and under in the turnover area can get you a win. It means you're taking care of the ball. Just for the folks at home who want to gauge how turnovers work. Cavaliers are at 16 tonight. Another foul going on Seoul. She's picked up her third and fourth on this possession. And with 4.38 to go, that is a matter of concern for Kenny Brooks. Yeah, Taylor Seoul grabbing the back of her left thigh, but also just coming up with her left eye kind of closed. Looks like she got hit in the face with the contact. Seems okay, but I think it's a good idea to sit her down for a minute or two, give her a break. I'm serious, Tech. There are some boxers who don't take as many shots to the face and about as Taylor Soul's taken tonight. Man, my goodness. I mean, in her career, period. I mean, she's been a penetrator her entire career. Has stepped it up a notch with this hokey squad as Valaday knocks down the free throw. Made them both. Back to a six-point game. Nearly a turnover in the backcourt. Virginia Tech fortunate to maintain possession. Hokies, when they get a shot up, they're shooting well. 52% this half. They've made four of their last five. You notice Virginia Tech running their sets, trying to take as much time off the shot clock as possible. Amor was bumped on the way by. It's the fourth team foul on Virginia. Side out for the Hokies or they'll have it underneath. And when you're a guard and you keep your eye on that shot clock and you see that it's 10 or under, look at what Georgia Amore did. She put her head down, went to the basket, drew the foul, stopped the clock. That's what you're supposed to do as a point guard under 10. Taylor just picked up her third. Smith deflects it out of bounds. Amor with King, Greg, Trailer, and Guyman. 
Just a small, pokey lineup right now. No soul, no Kitley. Greg, tough shot. Rebound McLean. Can Mir leave her finger marks on the final four minutes? And Cameron Taylor is just screaming for the ball, saying, give it to me. Valaday will take the three. Rebound Amor. Nearly mishandled, and it is a turnover. Trailer traveled. Yeah, kind of fumbled around in between the defense, but she still had possession. Referee right there on top of it. Calls the travel coach Brooks a little frustrated, but keeping his team alive and saying, hey, get it back defensively. You're going to make mistakes, but control what you can control. Go to possession game. Plenty of time for Virginia. Their only loss this year at Duke. Brunel inside. Excellent decision right there. They allowed Sam Brunel to ISO. She didn't have any help side defense coming, so they allowed her to go one-on-one. -on -one. Brunel has a nice touch around the rim. She's in double figures for the 10th time this season. She's got 11. King for three. Yes! But Kenny Brooks called that timeout after his own Kayla King knocked down the three-point shot. Her third three of the night. How many clutch shots has she hit throughout her career? Playing her 100th game as a Hokie tonight. Trailer does a good job of keeping her dribble alive, draws in the two defenders, and kind of sets a mini screen for Kayla King. And watch that. Nobody goes out to defend King because they're too preoccupied with the ball handler. Excellent, excellent job getting the ball to the right player and then her knocking down the shot. Kenny Brooks calls Kayla King the smartest person he's ever been around his entire life. What? That is... I mean, that's a nice compliment for Kayla King, but wow, I mean, that's a really good compliment. The smartest person. That's what he said. Man, I got to go rub up against her shoulder to shoulder and get some, <laughs> some smartness running off. That's how IQ works, if you rub against her arm. <laughs> That's why you're always, like, rubbing your arms against me during yeah. the broadcast. Yeah. Huh? Here's the Hokies' upcoming schedule, because we know it's the other way around. <laughs> Miami on Sunday, and then Louisville, Pitt, Wake, and Duke. Duke. None of those easy. No. Duke? I Wake Forest didn't make it easy for Duke tonight. The Blue Devils win in Winston-Salem by 10, but it was close all night long. Louisville is playing Georgia Tech right now. Cardinals have an eight-point lead late in the first half. Meanwhile, three minutes to go in Raleigh, and Boston College clings to a five-point lead on the road at Reynolds against NC State. I told folks last week, I said Boston College, I had them twice already, had their Rutgers game. And between that game and their first ACC game, I was just like, listen, they've improved so much. They're going to sneak one on somebody. I think they're going to get a couple more because they are good. Taylor, quick two. Important bucket for Virginia back to a five-point game. Still plenty of time. 2.40 remaining here in the fourth. Virginia trying not to foul, but wants to be aggressive defensively while allowing the Hokies to run as much time off the clock. Georgia Amor creates her own shot. Missed that one to the right. Rebound Virginia. Jump ball tie up. Arrow does belong to UVA. Cameron Taylor is a player who just wants the ball in her hands, and she's going to do it at both ends of the floor. Does an excellent job there. Getting on the floor, reserving the possession for the Cavs. It's going to take a break. A little confusion. It's not going to take a break. <laughs> Which is a good decision because she knocked down the last shot and she got that rebound down here. Another great crowd here at Castle Coliseum. They have really gotten behind this women's basketball program. Again, ranked in the top 10 for the sixth straight week, but getting pushed to the brink tonight in the Commonwealth Clash. 
Three-point game. And that's why Taylor was screaming for the ball a few plays ago, and it's worked out. The last two possessions, they gave her the ball, and she scored on both. She was the only player in double digits in the first half of this game for both squads. Amor takes it, makes it. Another timeout called by Kenny Brooks after another huge shot from Georgia Amor. And you know, that's because Kenny Brooks knows how important defense is. He wants to make sure his girls are set up. But right here, Georgia Amor says, you gave me too much space. I'm five foot six, but I can still see over you. Nice screening action before the defender can even get there and recover. Georgia Amor with the quick release puts it up and puts the Hokies up by six. Georgia Amor had attempted 25 threes in just her last two games, in large part because of the zone defenses that Virginia Tech faced. She's four for nine from deep tonight. She's got 20 points, leading all scores. And that was a clutch triple to double the lead with 152 remaining. And credit Virginia Tech, the first half of the game, they mostly went on the inside. They started shooting, so they got their game going from the inside out. Beautiful pass, but fumbled away by Taylor. The 17th Virginia turnover tonight. And there's still time. I mean, there's 143 left. A six-point Virginia Tech lead. No need to panic, but right here, Virginia has got to get a stop in a score if they want a chance at getting back in this one. King across the timeline. Precarious dribble through traffic, but it worked out okay for Virginia Tech. Hokies trying to get their 13th win of the season tonight. Late whistle. Where's it going? It's on Virginia's McLean. That's her fourth. McLean takes a minute to get up. Looked like she was coughing a little bit on the floor, but definitely does not agree with the foul. And this is where your teammates got to help you out, right? If you're Paulie, you got to call that screen out. And this is a learning lesson for both of them because McLean, that's not the defender's fault. That's not De'Asia Gregg's fault. She's strong. She set a good screen. Paulie's got to call that out and say, hey, you've got a defender to your left. Watch out. You can't let her get blindsided like that. Yeah, you're right. McKenna Dale is back in. McLean to the bench. Gregg at the line. She's been very solid this year. If she makes this next one, Tab, it'll be her second consecutive double-double. Has earned the trust of Kenny Brooks and this coaching staff. And she knocks down the second one as a player who Kenny Brooks knew he, she could trust because Greg was a player calling out the plays on the bench when she wasn't in. And he looked back and said, who's calling out the plays? It was Greg. Taylor on the stick back. Makes it a six-point game. What was that? Greg tried to hand it into Amor when she was still out of bounds. And she dropped the ball, and it's Virginia ball. A little bit of a brain fart there. A mistake by the Hokies, but Coach Brooks knows that Greg is a player who can get that back defensively. That's her effort. She's gonna do hustle. She's gonna get that ball back. Into Valade. Spinning on trailer. No, Amor rebound. She got drilled. This is a rugby match. I mean, Aussie rules football. <laughs> you know, and I would say that if that was Georgia Amor who initiated the contact with Cameron, just came flying into the she got steamrolled. picture trying to rebound the shot. And right here just takes out Georgia Amor. And Amor actually got pulled down by Dale. Dale grabbed her arm on the rebound and pulled her down, even though I thought it was Cameron Taylor at first. They gave the foul to Taylor. It's her fourth. Georgia back to the line. And she's now three for three tonight. She scored 24 here on Sunday. She's got 22 tonight. And without the reigning ACC Player of the Year, the Hokies are a minute away from getting a win over their Commonwealth rivals. Offensive foul! What happened?
been just the previous play on defense. De'Asia Gray almost had a very costly turnover for the Hokies, and now she says, I got you, coach. Defensively, I'm going to get that back, and she does just that, sacrifices her body yet again in this competition and comes up with a crucial charge draw. And right here does a good job. Cameron Taylor just been on fire. Sizes up, squares her feet, takes the contact, looks at the ref and says, oh yeah, I got that charge. And I think she was outside the restricted area, but remember she's the primary defender, so that's not a factor in that type of offensive foul. Halliday pressuring trailer, but KT handling it well. Hokies bleeding precious seconds from the clock. Amor blocked. Stoll throws it up. Not even on her birthday does that one go down. <laughs> We're down to 20 seconds, though. That won't fall for Smith. Taylor Stoll shaking up down the other end. Still hasn't gotten up. That's not good news for the Hokies. They might get the win, but more concern right now about the birthday girl, Taylor Soul. Looks like she's grabbing at her cap, but let's take another look. She shoots that. Oh, and just she steps on no one. Yeah, non contact. So it's not any contact, just lands a little awkwardly but needs to get helped off the floor and you just hope this is a cramp or something like it yeah it looks like it's a cramp yeah she's asking for water and she's getting that calf massaged this is not a team that can afford to lose a Taylor soul with Kitley banked up and Owusu still working her way back but even without Kitley or Owusu the Hokies are six wow. seconds away from one of their best wins of the year. It was a complete game, and they did it without Owusu and Kitley. Owusu's been out the last few games or so, but Kitley, this was just a game-time decision. Valaday comes up short, and that will do it. Virginia Tech gets the win over Virginia, 74 to 66. First time that Coach Brooks and Coach Mox match wits in the Commonwealth Clash. And this